Almost finally, I think I've got about seven minutes, but I think I only need about five, so I can say two things about Dawkins. Uh, I think that uh, I know Richard Dawkins, and I like him, despite everything. I think he's a brilliant scientist. I think he's a brilliant scientist. Brilliant popularizer of science. He's not an original scientist, but he's a brilliant, brilliant popularizer of science. And if you read his book on the, the way the eye is formed, it's just wonderful. Um, I just wish he hadn't got involved in all this stuff. Not because I disagree with his atheism. The, idea, uh, the ideas that he's come up with about how there isn't really a God are the sort of ideas that everybody in this room came up with when they were 15 or 16. There's nothing new there. Um, that's not the point. The point is two things. First of all, his nastiness to Christianity in particular. And secondly, I'm afraid, his ignorance. Now, his nastiness uh, is the way he holds Christianity particularly, but all religions, responsible for all the violence and destructive atrocities in the world. It's just not true. Genghis Khan in the Middle Ages, his armies, the Mongols, are reported to have killed more than 20 million people. This is a time when the population of London was 70,000. So you imagine how many went. He wasn't much of a Christian. In the 8th century, in 8th century China, there were wars between, which went on and on and on, and just estimated that about an eighth of the world's population was slaughtered then. Nothing to do with Christianity? I don't think Hitler or Pol Pot or Stalin or Mao had anything to do with any Christian religion or any other religion. It's just not true. And even more importantly, behind the fact is another fact. The idea that Christianity is a cause and that this book is a cause of atrocities is wrong, in my view. What's the cause of atrocities is us, basically men, who want power over other men and women, and they'll get power some, whenever they can get it. And if it means grinding people down and slaughtering them, they will do that. That's what you see. That's what you see with Genghis Khan. That's what you see with Mao. That's what you see with Hitler. They want power. And in certain cases, they've used religion because they'll use anything, any ideology, any supporting army. And religious ideologies are wonderful because it makes them look above the fray, which is the exact opposite of where they are. So you find again and again in empires people wanting to be gods. The Aztec Empire, he's a god. In Augustus, the first emperor of Rome. He would turn himself into a god after about three years. Uh, and so it went on. But what they're doing is using religion as an excuse and a camouflage because it aggrandizes what they do. They are not triggered by religion. I think they're using it for a human and a negative human impulse. One more thing, and that's to do with, and I th so I think he's wrong about that, and that's to do with, in a sense, the country we're in now. And I don't choose it because I'm in this country now. I've written about it. And this is where I think it's, it's really beyond bad. Well, a little thing. He said the slaves, you know, were given sops uh, by their masters and told, oh, if you believe in eternal life, that's fine. Don't worry about today. Just get on with being a slave. And so it was used to subdue them. It wasn't like that at all. That is not what happened. He just needed a fortnight's research to find out that it didn't happen. But it was good enough. Anything to slam that. I don't agree with that. He should have taken more care. But one more example, and then I'll move on to my final point. And that's this. He says the Aborigines were m miracles of survival, but they had this useless clutter in their heads called dream songs. Now, I think that is crazy they clack. I think it's deeply disreputable for a scholar to say that. This is a body of knowledge. Like the King James Bible is a body of knowledge. Like the Greek myths, again, to do with religion, are a body of knowledge. These are great bodies of knowledge. And the dream songs are doing what the Greek myths did, what the pharaonic writings did, what the West has done in different ways. They're trying to understand the condition in which they find themselves. They're asking precisely the same question we're asking now. Where do we come from? Where are we going? Why does the sun come up? Why are there earthquakes? What's happening? And Homo sapiens has progressed by being a curious species. His curiosity, her curiosity, has been the driving point. And to say the, the dream songs are useless clutter, well, who knows when they're properly investigated? I don't know. But I'm told by certain people who know about them that they're, they're of more than a little interest. 
But whether they are or they aren't to us today, who are, we to, who are we to despise what people then thought? And more importantly, and the clinching point is, maybe it's because of the dream songs that they could survive. Has he not considered that? I think that is a big consideration there. And there's more, but that's enough. What I finally want to